Hey everybody, Pastor Corey here. I want to extend a hearty welcome to you to uh, another of our digital services here at Court Street Christian Church. And uh, I got a few things to tell you about today. One of them is we are kicking off our benevolent drives for our, uh, our Christmas months. Our theme this Christmas is the wonder of it all, and we are hoping to uh, provide some wonder in some very specific areas in our community and around the world. We're going to be talking about those in the coming weeks. You'll find out how you can partner with us. But the first one that's very time sensitive, we only have a few weeks to do this, and it's a big goal, is we have this long-standing partnership with our local elementary school, Richmond. And every year around this time, we reach out to Richmond. We go, what are the needs? What could we do to just help bridge the gap? Many of the families at Richmond uh, have really struggled through the pandemic. Uh, all of the families actually are on uh, multiple free meals a day through the school. And so there's a lot of needs. And, so, and what we want to do after talking with the school is provide some comfort, provide a family meal and a positive family experience for those folks by giving them some gifts. All right? And so uh, I told you it was a big goal this year, right? I think I already said that. And the goal, let me just tell you how big it is. Last year it was 180 families at Richmond. This year the number has risen to there's 240 families at Richmond. That's a big jump. And so it's going to require some big generosity on each of our parts. So here's what you can do to participate with us. First of all, you can help us fill some of these gift bags by making a donation through our Push Pay app. You can uh, find this through our website. You can find it on your mobile phone. You can search for the Push Pay app. Here's the directions to get right to it. And even in that app, there's this drop down menu where you can select Christmas Richmond gifts, and that money will go towards this drive. Now, some of you like to shop, huh? You like to shop till you drop, and you guys are going to want to go out and know what's in here so you can fill one or two or three or however many bags you're able to on your own, and then just bring them here to church. We have until December 12th to fill those 240 bags, and let me show you what we decided to put in here after talking with the administrators over at Richmond. First, you can find this over at your local Walmart. Uh, these are some cookies that have a decorating kit in it as well. And uh, us staff here, we made the sacrifice and investment this week to test these cookies. And they're really good. And so we're excited about this. And you can pick up a box of these cookies and it will provide a great memory and a yummy snack for these families. We also have inside of here a game. This game happens to be one of my family's favorites called Spot It. And uh, maybe you'll get a different game. You could get like a Connect Four or like a Sorry game or something like that that's really good for all ages. This is an elementary school that we're partnering with. But you'll put in some cookies, you'll put in a game, and then lastly what goes inside of here is a nice cozy blanket, which is the gift that keeps giving all year round, right? So we've got cookies and games and blankets. Oh my, but that's not all. Once you get a, your bag to the church, and we would love it if you would wrap these items with the exception of the blanket, uh, we will actually add to the bag some extra prepackaged snacks and also some goodies to make a modest meal. And so they're going to get a meal, they'll get plenty of snacks, they'll have some great memories, they'll have a game, they'll be nice and warm for the holidays. We love this. So the cost for you to get a bag like this to fill it up, you know, you just buy a disposable bag at the store and get these items, it's probably only about 30 bucks. And so we can do this and make a huge impact in this local school and the lives of local families. So that's what's going on. I needed it on your radar. We got to get it done by December 12th. It's a big goal. We need you. They need us. We're going to do this. Go God. Go Court Street. Let's get this going. So um, besides this, the only other thing that I want to tell you about this week is that we have our Christmas memorial service coming up, and the time is now. It's going to be just this next weekend on December 5th at 5 p.m. We will be broadcasting that service live. And so you can tune in on uh, Facebook, uh, and also uh, you can view that through YouTube as well. And if you would like us to mention a loved one that you ha are grieving this time of year, you can send us a little paragraph to read and we will light a candle in their honor. 
If you also want to send us a picture, you can do that as well. You can see the contact information right up here. This slide will also be playing at the end of today's service if you miss it right now. And you can find this information all on our website as well. Hey, this service is always very special. This, the holiday season are times of intense joy, and for some, they're times of intense grief. And at this service, on, on the next Sunday evening, we're going to acknowledge the grief, we're going to invite God to meet us in it, and we're going to honor the loved ones who we've lost. So that's exciting. I'll look forward to sharing all that with you next week. Let's get to these baskets, and right now, let's get to our worship service. What are we waiting for? Let's go.
All right. Well, hey, greetings, everybody. Uh, it's time to get into our sermon today, and I want you to know you need a couple of things to get the maximum effect from this sermon today, and those things are you're going to need a couple pieces of paper and something to write with, all right, a pen or pa- uh, pencil, whatever it is that you prefer, and uh, also you're going to want to have the elements for communion, some grape juice, some bread, or something along those lines uh, in order for us to receive communion at the end of the service together. So pause me or scurry as quick as you can to go grab those things and then get right back here because we're going to have a doozy of a time together in this end of our Generous Life series that we're in. And so today we get to celebrate. It's Thanksgiving weekend. We've been talking about the generosity of God, especially the generosity of God that flows through our money, our finances. And today we're just going to have a good old time celebrating that, thanking God, and filling our hearts with gratitude. So uh, I want to tell you something, okay? Confession time here, all right? Listen up. I have a hard time I struggle with a couple of things in church. One of them is clapping. Whenever somebody wants us to clap along with the song, I didn't get the gift of any kind of rhythm and I struggle with it and it's awkward and it throws off people around me. I'm terrible. The other thing that I'm not very good at, that I just struggle with, and I think this is more inside of myself, something stuck in there, is I don't like speaking out loud in church. In fact, when the pastor says from the front, hey, everybody repeat this after me, or and everybody said, you know, amen, or something like this, I usually get out a really pathetic, like, amen, amen, you know, this kind of little deal. I don't know, anybody else out there like me where you struggle with either of those things, huh? Well, um, I just want you to know today, in order to, again, just have the maximum enjoyment of this beautiful service that we've put together, I'm going to invite you to take a step beyond yourself and to respond wherever you are, to say a few words, okay? And that might seem silly to you, but here's the truth. If I was sitting watching this and I was gonna say it out loud, I'd feel silly. And if I was sitting here with all the other people, I already confessed it, I feel silly then. When am I not gonna feel silly? I might as well try it, right? Let's practice. Let's just practice and get a little warm up here, okay? I'm going to say to you, hello. And wherever you are, just say hello and wave back, all right? Hi. Great. How about this? I'm going to let you tell me how your week has been in just a quick little sentence, okay? You better make it quick or I'm going to cut you off, all right? Hey, Pastor Corey here. How's your week been? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry, it's hard to make listening noises like this, isn't it? All right. Well, you get what we're doing because here's the deal. Here's what we're building up to is today I'm going to do a responsive reading. And it's going to probably go over better with our in-person service than it does online. But I don't want to cheat you out of this because I believe it's going to be a really beautiful thing. And so at different points in our service today, uh, I'm going to invite you to repeat after me. And this is something that was inspired by a blogger that I just happened to stumble across through the internet this week. Her name's Beth Merrill Neal. And, uh, and so here's how this responsive reading goes. I'm going to say at different times, may the Lord be with you. And the things in yellow you're going to say after I say it, all right? So let's try this right now. And please, don't leave me hanging. God knows what's going on here. Let's just do it. Let's just go for it, all right? And this isn't, by the way, repeating something in church. It's not some hypnosis or mind manipulation or an old Jedi mind trick. It's just us participating and saying things together and bringing the message into ourselves and saying it out from ourselves. It's just participation. So let's participate. May the Lord be with you. Let us fill our hearts. Let us give thanks to our God. Okay, we got through the first one, huh? Isn't that great? All right, give yourself a round of applause. Come on, you're talking, clapping too. We're getting all of the things I'm no good at today out, all right? Well, hey, so today's service is going to be really special. We don't normally do stuff like this, but this is a special service that we are calling a Liturgy of Gratitude. And in a liturgy, there's these responsive times, there's these readings and responses, and it's going to hopefully build up in our hearts where you just leave today feeling a little more connected to the gratitude and thankfulness of God. So what we're going to do this in is two parts. Our first focus is going to be on thanksgiving and gratitude for others and toward others. You know, here at Court Street, 
we have this guiding phrase that comes directly from the mouth of Jesus. It's really the thing we're all about is loving God and loving others. We're going to start today with the loving and appreciating others. And as we move through this, you'll notice that we follow this little pattern. We're going to celebrate some things. We're going to declare some things. Hint, hint, that's where the responsive reading will come in. And then we're also going to respond with some action, okay? And so let's get right into this here. We're going to start today by celebrating some of the beautiful comments that we received in response to this generosity sermon. You know, these uh, sermons, this church isn't just about me getting up here and saying all these things and making the, you know, it's about us as the church being stirred up in the movement of God, of following Jesus in this world. And, uh, and so it's about these stories that come together. And uh, a few beats back, um, Pastor Josh and Pastor Becca, they preached a message about generosity and they talked about some of the nuances of finances and marriage and how different people in marriage value different things. Here's what Alice wrote to us. And Alice, um, uh, she sadly had her husband pass just this last year. And so the sermon actually stirred up this fond memory of a time that they shared. She said, thank you for such a good sermon yesterday. It made me think of a number of things, but it brought back this memory. Clark's and my things were yarn and tools. She was into yarn with the budget. He was into tools with the budget. And it made me remember this time that he got a DeWalt drill. He was so pleased with it. He said he was going to bring it, bring it to bed with us. And guess what? It started the night on the pillow between us. <laughs> I love those quirky little connection points that we have to one another uh, in this church. Here's another bit of feedback that we got from uh, Vanessa who responded to this last week's uh, sermon about anger and God relieving us from that anger. She said, this was quite an impactful message, quite an impactful message. I think too there is an anger that tears people apart and also an anger that can bring them together for purposeful action. Witness the suffrage and civil rights movements. In God's hand, it can be a powerful tool. Amen, amen. I love the connections that you're making there. And I love that these messages are stirring us up to see God in our everyday lives and to do something about it. Well, um, one of the other things that I have to report to you that we get to celebrate is we had a uh, baptism this last week. In fact, it was just on Tuesday of this Thanksgiving week. And this was in our youth department. Pastor Mark got to baptize Cole Steele. And you can see here them interacting before the baptism and then Cole going into the water and coming back out, showing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus that is alive in our hearts. Wherever you're at, would you just give the Lord a round of applause for that? Isn't that exciting, huh? You know, um, I mentioned earlier, if you missed the announcements, I was talking about these bags that we're going to fill with presents to bless and minister to our local school, elementary school, Richmond. And I just want you to know... Um, one of the things that I can celebrate and be grateful for about the people of this church is whenever we put something like this before the church, you guys always rise to the occasion. It's amazing. E each year we come up with these big goals, and this year the, the school had a really um, just a, a, an ask for us about this that it just felt, uh, it felt beyond our power. Only God can help us accomplish it. But I already know that you are a generous church. We are a generous people. And when we hear about a way to extend the love of God, we don't just think about it or send some warm wishes. We actually get up and we do something about it. And I'm so excited to celebrate the results of this in a few weeks. So um, I, uh, I want to revisit something from the very beginning of this sermon series. In fact, the inaugural message of it Part of what inspired this sermon series was a poem. And it was a poem written by one of my favorite uh, poets, Northwest poet David White. And uh, the poem really has this provocative sense of provoking our generosity in that it invites us to see generosity as this bold step where we're actually growing and going beyond ourselves, where we're reaching for that distant horizon, the place that, that's beyond our reach, but we're compelled to go and compelled to live in this way of faith and love. And the poem's called Just Beyond Yourself. 
And I'll read it once again to you. Many of you mentioned that this was a, a beautiful poem. Some, some of you, like me, find some poetry a bit unapproachable and a little too this or that. Um, but uh, this poem was one that just kind of is like a drumbeat that gets us going, doesn't it? So he says this, Just beyond yourself, it's where you need to be. Half a step into self-forgetting and the rest restored by what you'll meet. There is a road always beckoning. And when you see the two sides of it closing together at that far horizon and deep in the foundations of your own heart at exactly that same time, that's how you know it's the way you have to go. That's how you know it's the road you have to follow. That's how you know it's just beyond yourself. It's where you need to be. That really is the invitation of Christ to us, isn't it? it, is to do as he did, which is to live beyond himself, to live to the point of generosity that was sacrificial, generosity that was forgetting, self-protection, self-preservation, all of it. What a beautiful thing. And in light of that generosity, in light of the beauty of God flowing through others and in us, let's share the responsive reading again. Here we go. May the Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts and let us give thanks to our God. Amen. Well, here's what I want you to do. Now I want you to practice what I'm preaching and in our focus on this first piece of our liturgy of gratitude, of thanksgiving for others and towards others, I want to invite you to respond by taking one of those pieces of paper that I told you to get, and I want you to pause here and write a note of appreciation to someone. Who's somebody that as we talk about the benevolence, as we talk about the goodness of God, that they come to mind as someone that you could take just a few moments and acknowledge with a note? Or maybe you're even going to grab your phone. It's okay, you can use your phone in church for this, and you're going to fire off a few texts to some people. But I'm going to give you... Uh, just a few moments right now to do that. In fact, we'll, uh, we'll go to a song here. You'll hear this beautiful song played. And then what you can do is we'll come back at the end and we'll uh, go into part two of our Liturgy of Generosity. See you in a few. past my pain and Right now my songs have turned to silence Right now you never seem so far away But I still believe I still believe There's no heart can rescue No story so over it can't start again no pain you won't use no wall you won't break through it might be too much for me but there is no possible with you 
There's no heart you can rescue, no war you can win, no story so over it can't start again. No pain you won't use, no wall you won't break through. It might be too much for me, but there is no possible way. All right, we're going to keep moving here with our liturgy of gratitude. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's amazing how words of affirmation go into the human heart and soul like water. And so uh, I hope that you took the time to actually practice what I'm preaching, and I hope you'll follow through on actually sending out that message of gratitude and thankfulness to whoever it was. Well, uh, let's focus our attention now into our liturgy of gratitude part two, we're going to focus now on loving God and, get, and expressing thanksgiving for God and towards God. And we'll follow the same pattern. We're going to celebrate some things. We're going to declare some things together. And we will respond with a form of action. Okay? So, uh, one of the things that uh, is really exciting that I get to celebrate and share with you today is the result of our generosity campaign. I shared with you at the beginning of this uh, sermon series that what we wanted to do is we had some financial goals here at the church. The pandemic, like many nonprofits, uh, we were negatively affected by it. And there's been some different wild things that God has done to meet our needs last year in 2020 and then also this year in 2020. If things continue on, it looks like our expenses will meet our income. It's a, a really a miraculous thing. But as we're looking at 2022, we set these goals because we were anticipating that we were going to need to make up some deficits in order to continue to fund this ministry, this conversation, all the good things here and around the world. And so uh, here were the goals I put before you. You'll remember this, okay? The goals for our generosity campaign were to welcome 20 first-time donors to our group. You know, whenever that happens, I don't know who the donors are, but I sign my name to a, a letter that my finance department generates, and we celebrate that and recognize that whenever somebody starts to contribute here at the church. And also, our other goal was to see a $10,000 per month increase in our giving. You know, that would come through first-time donations, but also through the rest of us who just consider this place our home, our church, looking at our finances. Allison and I did this together and decided to take a step of faith and make an increase in our monthly donation. So I get to report to you the results of this today. And the first one is this. We are, our goal was 20 first-time donations, and the result was we got two. What's going on out there, people? <laughs> you know, I really want to celebrate these two, uh, but also I want to invite you. I think some of you kind of seem to wait till the last minute. Well, this is the last minute. And so if you've left that partnering with us on the altar of good intentions, I just want to say, get up right now and let's go to this thing. In fact, I'll show you in a moment how you can partner with us right away. And uh, every little bit, every little bit adds up to something significant. But a big welcome to these two new first-time donors. And uh, our second goal was this, was to raise 10000 per month extra. And what we raised really on first look, was about $4,220 per month. Now, get excited about that. That's exciting. That's a significant increase, okay, that is going to continue to fund the ministry. Now, let me take you on a magical little thing called going through spiritual time warp, okay? I want to break the space-time continuum here for just a moment. So um, we knew we were going to do this campaign for a while. Our elders were talking about it for a while. In fact, we were praying about it months in advance. We're monitoring the finances, monitoring all this stuff. And so we've been praying and asking God to meet our needs and to raise donations above where we were projected to be. Now, a rather sizable donation came into the church uh, that was completely unexpected. 
In fact, if you wonder what people give here at the church, most of it is just people like you and me giving. We don't have some, you know, big, you know, huge giver that's always writing a big check to the church. But we got this over and above gift from a donor who I don't know their name, uh, but uh, they gave a gift that was incredibly significant. And they gave that gift after we started praying, but before we started the campaign. And as we look at that, we go, God heard that prayer. He met the need. And so after we factor in their gift, the result is really next year, we'll have about $9,220 per month towards our goal. Now, that's pretty awesome. Just in a month here of talking about this and praying about it, we increased the generosity by almost $10,000 per month. And this little margin here of where we're at from here to here, you know, it's honestly kind of difficult to track this stuff. Some of you haven't started to give yet. You were going to wait till the first of the year. I've heard stories from people. Maybe we've already met it. But I just want to break down this gap for you, especially those of you who have started participating with us online. Maybe it's time for you to take a step and look at what this would look like to bridge this gap right here, okay? It would only take 10 of you at $10 per month, okay? That would equal 100 bucks. 10 of you at $20 per month, which would equal $200 a month. And 10 of you at $50 a month, which would equal 500 and actually put us 800 a month, which is slightly over the $10,000 threshold. So hey, maybe it's time. You waited till the final hour. You forgot. You had good intentions. Whoops, you bumbled you know, and fumbled. And now it's time to grab your phone, use the push pay app that it shows here, and to uh, go ahead and just participate with us. But overall, I just want to do this. I want to pause and I want to celebrate because God's generosity flowing through people like you and me is what funds this church. We don't have coffers of major finances. We don't have, you know, some big corporation thing or anything like this or a mothership denomination that's feeding us funds. It's just the generosity of God flowing through my checking account. Your finances, others' finances. And so would you just pause and give God a round of applause for what he did here in our midst? So this is super exciting. Thank you, church. Thank you. I'm so excited. And uh, as we look to next year, uh, the future looks bright. So as we get into this, I want to also look at another quote from somebody that I think really stirs up some good generosity. This is from Judy in our church. And she reached out to Pastor Josh And she said this, I've been enjoying the sermons about being generous. And it's brought to mind a practice that my brother recently refreshed my memory about, something that Native Americans practice on a regular basis. And she sent a link to an article about a uh, a celebration and a way of life that's called potlatch, okay? And this is uh, just a really cool cultural thing. She says, the bottom line is in that their culture, the measure of wealth is how uh, how much a person gives away not how much they amass for themselves. That's worth saying again. In their culture, the measure of wealth is, not how, is how much a person gives away, not how much they amass from themselves. We could learn a thing or two from this. Doesn't that just sound like the life of the blessed Jesus? You know, if you uh, Google this potlatch and what that concept means, it's really quite beautiful. And um, in fact, it has some links to some of the, uh, the Native American tribes that are right here in our beloved Pacific Northwest. And um, I found this uh, quote from one of the elders, and they said this. They said, when one's heart is glad, he gives away gifts. Our creator gave it to us to be our way of doing things, to be our way of rejoicing. We, who are Kawaka, Waka, Oh, I need to make sure I say it right. I had it so good before I had to say it. Kwa Kwa Kewak. Kwa Kwa Kewak. Okay? That's the name of this, this beautiful tribe. Everyone on earth, though, is giving something. And the potlatch was given to us to be our way of expressing joy. You know, we unlocked some of that miracle for ourselves, didn't we? As we discovered that the words of the blessed Jesus, it's more blessed to give than receive. We experienced those in our midst. And I just want to remind you of the generosity of God, the beauty of the tender Jesus with some of the words that he shared with his disciples at a time right now when we're still in this pandemic, when we're going into the hustle and bustle of the holiday season. I want you to hear these words from Jesus in a fresh way. Listen to this. 
Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat, or about your body, or what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body is more than clothes. Consider the ravens. Consider these birds of the air. They don't sow or reap, and they have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them, and how much more valuable are you than the birds? He goes on to say, Who of you by worrying? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the wildflowers and how they grow. They don't labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire or in the recycle bin, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you'll eat or drink. Don't worry about it. The pagan world runs after all those things and your father knows that you need them. So seek the kingdom and those things will be given to you as well. And then this final bit of wonderful reassurance. Don't be afraid, little flock. Don't be afraid. For your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. So sell your possessions. Give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not last or wear out. A treasure in heaven that will never fail. Where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In light of those words, will you please have this response with me to the goodness of God. May the Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts and let us give thanks to our God. What I want to invite you to do, uh, we've stirred up this generosity, this benevolence, this gratitude, this thanksgiving towards others and towards God. Hopefully your heart has been stirred. I want to invite you now to enter into a practice of expressing your gratitude to God. And so I want you to take that other piece of paper and I want you to write on it, all right? What I want you to write is I want you to write a response to this. Father, Son, and Spirit, our triune God, I feel grateful as I consider and just let it go. Maybe it's a story of something recently. Maybe it's a list of things or people or, or whatever it is, but I hope the generosity has been stirred, off, stirred up and I want you to express it right now in these next few moments. There will be a song uh, playing right now as our band uh, comes onto the screen. And I, I'm going to give you this time to write this down and then I want you to set that generous letter that you've written, those words before the communion, and when you're ready, take the communion, eat the bread, remembering the tangible generosity of God through the gift of his son Jesus, and drink the juice, remembering this great love of God. Take a few minutes to express your gratitude and receive communion, and then I'll see you in a moment for some closing words. on this journey I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength My story isn't over, my story's just begun Cause failure won't define me, yeah that's what my father does No failure won't define me, yeah that's what my father does
Hey, we've had uh, quite an experience today going through this liturgy of gratitude. I hope it's stirred you up to new considerations of love for God and love for others. I'm going to give the, uh, the scripture some final words here. I've got a compilation of some of the doxologies from the New Testament. And um, let me just read these over you, and then we'll go into one final dramatic response to our service today, okay? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we could ask or think according to that power that's at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. And one last time I say over you, church, and you repeat to me, may the Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts and let us give thanks to our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace, my friends. I will see you next week.